Okay, so dimensional analysis, analyzing dimensions. We're analyzing things that can and have been measured. What this really means is we are converting things, right? So if you get good at this, this is something that's going to be useful to you well beyond chemistry. This will be useful to you in every single science class that involves numbers and possibly even lots of your math classes. This will be useful to any if you, you know, if you're a party planner or an engineer, right? It's very simple and once you learn how to do it, you know, then you're good. It's not hard, but you just have to kind of do some practice first. So, the first thing you need to change a unit into something else is you need something that's called a uh, conversion factor, All right? A conversion factor. So, 100 centimeters equals one meter. When we say the 100 centimeters equals one meter, this can be written two ways. You can write it with the centimeters in the numerator and the meter in the denominator or vice versa, All right? These, these are both equally accurate, they're both true, and which way you use depends on what you're trying to do. Okay, so, if I have, um, example, let's say I have 3.87 meters. Whatever your measured number is, that's where you should start. Start the problem with the measured number, 3.87 meters. Now, technically, this is 3.87 meters over 1. The over 1 is not necessary here. Like, I know we wrote that here, but you don't need to write that if you don't want to. You can if you want to. I'm going to multiply that by the conversion factor. But I need to make sure, because my goal is to find the measurement in centimeters, in the conversion factor, you put the unit that you're looking for at the top. Always put the unit you're trying to find in the numerator, and that way the unit that you started with will end up being in the denominator, and that's good because that way it will cancel. After the meters cancel, we only have one unit left, which is what we wanted, so the answer is 387 centimeters. All right, so that's a simple one-step example. Conversions can take many steps, and just because it takes many steps does not make them necessarily more difficult. It just means you have more things to keep track of. So let's try another example. Micrograms. Micrograms. That funny little character there, right? This, this guy here, that's the, uh, the symbol for the prefix for micro. So if we have 195 micrograms, and the goal is to convert this into kilograms, so the first step right here, I want to cancel micrograms. So that's what I want to attempt to do in my first conversion. So there are 1,000 micrograms in a milligram. And this first step will allow us to cancel the microgram unit. Now, next, for every one gram, there's 1,000 micrograms. I'm sorry, milligrams. That's mg is milligrams. Now these two could be combined, right? If you knew that one gram had a million micrograms, this, this, this conversion and these two are the same. So sometimes you can even use different conversions as long as the end result is the same. The last step, because they, they asked us to find kilograms, is there's one kilogram for every thousand grams. So when you're carrying out work like this, all of the units must be shown. When you write this out, the mg, the g, the micro, the kg, all of that has to be shown because all of that needs to be shown to be canceled, right, for full credit for the work. If you don't show that, then we, can't, we don't have a lot of confidence that you know what you're doing, okay? Now, after all those cancellations, it, you should see that only kg was left. So now, now that we have set up our work properly and we have verified that our units are canceled correctly, now, last, you go ahead and calculate. So type this in your calculator to make sure that you are able to arrive at the same result. 
everything in the numerators get multiplied and you divide by everything in the denominators. And of course, your calculator is going, showing you scientific notation, so it will write its number this way, which, as we discussed the other day, is scientific notation. We good? Common errors that come up, I do see people get um, get their, the same number, but their exponential notation on 10 will be wrong. So here, here's some uh, the wrong way to enter something. Right? If I wanted to enter in, say, the number 1,000, right, I could number this, enter this a couple ways. Your calculator, the simplest way is to do this. Okay. I saw some people the other day doing this. Right, and here the problem is we are adding an extra 10. And that person ended up seeing 10,000. Okay, so when you use the second comma, the, the expon exponent key, you do not do times 10 also. That, that second comma is in place of times 10. Okay? All right, let's try some more. Metrics. So there are metric prefixes, and we mentioned them on the first day the main ones you need to know, all right? If I'm going to zoom back to where we were, where the metric prefixes are, so we can highlight these. Sorry, bear with me. Okay, the main ones that you need to know: kilo, centi, milli. If there were three that are the most important out of this lot, it's these three. Okay, because they're the most commonly used. In chemistry yeah I did mention micro a second ago but we're not really going to be using that because it's not very applicable in a lab sense neither is nano okay so like what I'm, what I'm trying to say to you is that like on a quiz or test you would have to know these three okay all right let's go back to where we were Okay, so using metric prefixes, let's convert the following. We are given kilograms and we want to find milligrams. All right, so 1.45, you always start with the number and the value given. And the go we're going from a big unit to a very small unit. So this is, we're not going to go directly. You always should go to the base unit first. So kilo, between kilograms and milligrams, what's the base unit? Grams. So let's go to grams first. Okay, so since I am given kilograms and I want to find grams, does it make sense, guys, that the kilograms is on the bottom and the grams is on top? Okay, so which one is bigger, the kilogram or a gram? Kilogram. kilogram, so that gets the one. So a thousand, the relationship is a thousand, good. Okay, so this is my first step. The result of this first step is that it will cancel kilograms. And if I stopped here, my answer would be expressed in grams. But I'm not done because they're not asking about grams. They're asking about milligrams. So we set up another conversion. Since it's milligrams that I want, it goes on the top. And it's grams that I have to cancel that goes on the bottom. I'm going to pause here for a second. Does everybody see how I came up with that so quickly? Right? we're not quite at the unit we want, right? The unit we want goes on top. Gra currently, we, the pink, the end of the pink calculation is grams, so grams has to be canceled. That's why grams is on the bottom. All right, so what's bigger, a milligram or a gram? So that gets the one. What's the relationship between a thousand? Good. All right. Now, cancellation-wise, you should see that the grams cancel, and the only unit that's left standing is milligrams. 
So we set this up correctly. Now let's see if we can calculate this correctly. So my calculator gave me standard notation. So I can write it that way, but I think it's more appropriate to write this in scientific notation. So the answer has three sig figs. We're allowed three six is 1.45 times 10. And then we move one, two, three, four, five, six. Standard notation is just a regular number, how you've always been writing numbers, right? You would use standard scientific notation when the number would be annoying to write over and over again due to the number of zeros. Okay, let's do number part B. Did that work out okay, part A? Yeah. Are we the same? All right, let's do B. DECA, yeah. Oh, good. You know what? Here, that's a good point. I want to mention DL. There's two DLs. There's little DL and then there's capital DL. The capital is the bigger version, the deca, whereas the little lowercase d is deci. Okay, so that's how you can tell by the size. Okay, there's also another example of this is milli, milliliters versus megaliters, right? The capital M is the mega, right? There's a million of something if you have a megaliter. Okay. All right, so starting with 256 milliliters. The goal is to get to decaliters. I'm going from a small unit to a large unit, so I have to go to the base unit first. What is my next conversion that I set up here? Who can tell me? To liters, okay. So what is that relationship? What goes where? On the top and bottom. Which one? Liters on the top, yes. So milliliters on the bottom, the question is how many? A thousand, yes. All right, that is our first step in our conversion. Our second step, we can go from liters to decaliters. Liters should go on the bottom, decaliters should go on top. Uh, what is a bigger unit, a decaliter or a liter? A decaliter, so that gets one. And so how many liters are in a decaliter? Ten. Ten. Okay. Get some cancellations going on. Only one unit left, so this looks set up correctly. Let's go ahead and calculate. You guys tell me, what did you get? Zero point zero two five six. Okay, I got the same. Oops, wrong place. Um, so, good question. You don't need to. This number is not, uh, there's not, I wouldn't say there's too many zeros here, like leading zeros, there's not too many trailing zeros either. You could, if you wanted to. Wait, that's, that two is fictional, just kidding. So 2.56 times 10 to the minus 2, you could very well do that if you wanted. Get in the habits of always writing your units, right? You ha there will be a point penalty if you do not have units, okay? All right. Take a minute, try to do C on your own. That's not DESA, that's DECA.
Did she have what did you get? That's right. Uh, can you tell me how you set this up? Uh, I put zero point zero one four five Celsius gram for this gram, and the ten grams, ten gram is equal to one decagram, so ten gram over one decagram. Uh, decagram, sorry. Okay. Decagram is uh, thirty Gs, and then I put ten Qs milligrams over one gram because ten thousand milligram over one is equal to over one gram. You could write one thousand. You don't have to write ten cubed. You guys all get that? Yeah. Okay. That's fine. Yeah, like, like that's totally fine. You just left that as scientific notation. Yeah. yeah. I just write in the habit of writing. If it, if it's okay, so scientific notation is discretionary. It, it's you're not wrong if you did one way or the other. Okay. It's more so a preference. Okay. Yeah. You know, the only time it's not a preference is if I literally tell you write this in scientific notation. And you got to do it, right? But in any problem, do what's convenient for you, okay? All right. So here are some non-metric conversions for distances and volumes. You probably know a lot of these, but I bet you don't know some of these, right? So you might have heard, for those of you who run track across country, that a mile is 1,760 yards. You probably more so know a mile by feet, right, which is 5280, Okay. Uh, you know a yard is three feet, you know an inch is 2.4, but you ever heard of a rod? No, because you're not a sailor, right? So if you were a sailor and you had to, you were constantly pulling in ropes, right, and sending up sails, these are terms that would mean something to you. A fathom is the height of the average man, six feet, right? A chain is 22 yards. A furlong, have you ever heard of a furlong? No. You ever heard of a furry snake? Okay, anyways, just kidding, that's a bad joke. Barley corn is one inch. Okay, so three barley corns. Imagine picking out three corns of barley and line them up and say, oh yeah, that's an inch, right? Those things can vary wildly, right? So it's not a great system, all right? In any event, oh, leagues. You've probably heard of leagues if you've ever read, you know, what, 10,000 Leagues Under the Sea, right? Okay. Gallons, these are more conventional. If you've cooked or followed a recipe at any point in your life, I'm sure you use some of these, but you probably haven't used a jigger. A jigger, well, a jigger is one-third of a tablespoon. That's what a jigger is. It's kind of like a, a quick splash. Highly, highly inaccurate if you try to estimate it, right? In any event, so here are some weird conversions. You don't need to memorize these. These are weird, right? But the point is, the point is not what the actual conversion is or how weird these are. The point is, whatever the conversion factor is, you need to be able to set it up properly because you're going to see conversion factors that seem weird and foreign to you because they're brand new. It doesn't matter, just as long as you can set it up correctly, right? So let's go ahead and uh, here, we'll do eight together. 4.5 miles, okay? The goal is to get to furlongs. So we got to plan this out. We got to look at our conversions and see how we're going to get there. So looking at our distances, if I'm starting with a mile, which is here, Where's furlongs? Furlongs is down here. So a furlong has an equivalency in yards, and a mile also has an equivalency in yards. So those make for good conversions to choose. Okay? So, a mile is 1760 yards, and then a furlong. was That is right. 36. Mm, then you, one of your numbers was slightly off that you entered then. Okay. 
Okay. Are you guys getting the gist of this? Dimensional analysis, all really all it is is unit cancellation, right? And you can actually use the units to help figure out how to solve the problem. If you know if the principle of solving for the top, canceling the bottom, you can string together a bunch of these. Like in B, 12 leagues. So 12 leagues. The goal is to get to fathoms. Okay, so let's look at our conversions. How can we get there? League is here. So league has an equivalency in miles. Miles have equivalency in yards. Uh, yards goes to feet. And what were they asking for again? Fathoms. Fathom is six feet. Okay, so what was that? Four or five conversions we just, okay, so let's, let's line them up. Okay, so league. A league, and I have such a bad short-term memory here. What was league again? League was three miles. Okay. Three miles, and then a mile was 1760 yards, and then a yard was three feet, and then there was six feet in a fathom. Let's pause here for a second before you even calculate. How many sig figs does this number represent? I'd say this is this is a conversion factor. This is defined. This is well established. So does was this a measurement of three of the number three miles with only one sig fig? How many does it have? Infinite. Infinite. How about this number? Infinite. How about this number? And this number? So how many sig figs is your answer going to have? What is it going to be based on? Uh, it's based on the original measurement. How many, we started with 12, right? So two sig figs. Okay. So. Correct. Good question. How, oops, how do we get this number to two sig figs? We had a bunch of those on the homework, didn't we? Yeah, I'd have to round it. Yeah. Always after calculations, circle your answer, make it very clear, because some of your guys is, you know, most people work from left to right. But some people don't, so make sure you uh, indicate clearly what your answer is. Okay, and so the last thing we need to talk about is something called a dual unit, right? A dual unit is a unit that has two units, miles per hour, okay? You know, you are all familiar with miles per hour because you have been in a car and seen a sign on a road somewhere that tells you what the speed limit is. When there are two units, how you go about canceling is no different. You just have to follow the same principles. All right, whatever you're going to be canceling ends up being placed in the bottom. Whatever you want to solve for gets placed in the top. Okay, bless you. So, 60 miles per hour. The goal is to convert this to feet per second. So, I have a time unit and I have a distance unit. We'll do the distance first because that's what we're used to. Okay, so in one mile, which will go on the bottom, there are, and we'll go by the units they gave us, there's 1,760 yards, okay? And then the next step, the yard goes on the bottom, three feet goes on the top. So that part's fine. Now, the hour part starts in the denominator. 
Uh, if we want to change what the denominator is, you're going to have to multiply. So that means the hour goes in the numerator of this next conversion. And what equivalency do you know about time in hours? One hour equals 60 minutes. 60 minutes, right. 60 minutes. So now that step has canceled our hour. And if we stopped right now, if we stopped here, what would our units be? Feet per minute, but that's not what they wanted. So we go one more step. Correct. One minute on the top, 60 seconds on the bottom. The minute will now cancel. And your resulting units are going to be what you did not cancel, which is feet per second. So your calculator initially tells you 88 feet per second, but how carefully was that number measured that you started with? Was it 60.0? Was it 60.00? How many sig figs are in that number? It's only one. Hmm. So what's my answer? 90. Okay, so um, there are more examples of conversions that we don't need to, to do right now. There's one more thing I want to show you, and then we'll be done. If you have a squared unit, like let's say you have the area of something, okay? So let's say you have a unit, something like 50.5. Uh, inches squared. When you are converting squared units or cubed units, the conversion factor needs to be done as many times so as to cancel the original unit. So let's say I wanted to convert this into centimeters squared. Right, that's my goal. The conversion between inches and centimeters, well, do you guys remember? Check, check the table. How many, what's the relationship between centimeters and inches? 2.54, that's right. So 2.54 centimeter in the numerator, one inch on top. If I carry out this conversion, notice how the inches that I started with, it starts with inches squared, but it only cancels once. So you have to do this conversion twice. Right, so really what you're doing then is you're multiplying 50.5 times 2.54 times 2.54. And then you will, the resulting unit would be centimeters squared. So you need to pay attention to if you have squared or cubed units. If you had cubed units, you'd have to do this three times. Okay? So. But you know, by now, we can't leave that written that way. What's the answer going to be? Three hundred twenty-six. How are we doing? Dimensional analysis, setting up and canceling units. The one that you want goes on top. The one you want to cancel goes on the bottom. It can be a couple steps. It can be many steps. However many steps doesn't matter as long as you set it up correctly. But, it, you know, again, don't calculate these as you do the problem. Set up all of the workflow first so you don't waste your time, right? Plus, it's easier. You're less likely to make a mistake if you check that your workflow looks correct, okay? In your workflow, you have to show your units and you have to show them being canceled. Okay, you can't just like leave that out because that's part of the points. All right, so let's go ahead and stop that.